So that's who we are at Adventures in Voice Acting. And our special guest for today, please welcome Julie Lewer. So people, people may know you from another name, Julie Maddalena. So, um, um, so I just want to let's let's talk a little bit about where you started because you started as a Maddalena. Did you not? Did you not? Can you guys hear me okay? I love it. Oh, we're gonna go there. No, we just we just need to turn on just needed to turn on the mic. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so tell me, uh, let's get some basics done really quickly. Where did you grow up? I grew up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. I was there until I was three. My head popped above the level of the snow, and they took me out of there and grew up in the Bay Area. <laughs> I love it. It was awesome. Good. Does your head still pop? My time? head does <laughs> not always pop above the level. It depends on where I am. That was a short joke. <laughs> Uh, okay, so so you did most of your schooling uh, out here in California. I did. Okay. Um, I started in Northern Cal, mm -hmm. and then did really the bulk of my training in Southern Cal. Really? Okay. So when did you start acting? When did you start training to be an actor? Well, I um, I started doing theater at like uh, twelve or thirteen. I was a dancer from age seven, which actually folds into dubbing skills. We can talk about that in a sec. Um, so yeah, I was doing theater and um, always wanted to be a performer. I started by you know just loving acting in general and performing in general. And um, I did my first film with little little novelty bit of information here. E.G. Daly, some of you might know her from Rugrats. Did my first film with her in the Bay Area called Street Music. So that was when I was 16 when I did that, and of course got the bug big time. Uh, luckily got my SAG card through that, which was dreamy. So now you're on camera live. So I'm on, on, on camera live, and that's really, that was how I started my career, was on camera. I made connections there. I actually joined a pro improv group in the Bay Area when I was 16. Didn't know anything about it, just raw guts and glory, right? Just pure sheer <laughs> show up and let the fear channel you through everything that's required of you. And also fell in love with that. So that's when my passion for improvisation and my understanding of how it really um, lays an incredible foundation for any kind of dramatic theatrical work. But there is a unique fear and terror and horror about being on an improv stage and can't think of anything to say. Yeah, so. <laughs> like use it, make it work for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's uh, those connections that I made when I was in the Bay Area. Some of you might have heard of Carolyn Berry, Carolyn and JJ Berry. Carolyn was just an incredible force, and she just uh, happened to be in the Bay Area running classes, and she became sort of a mentor. So when I came to LA, she got me hooked up, got me started with um, agents and anything that you hear people say, oh, we'll get you hooked up, you know. Well, and she did it. She did it all. She was an amazing uh, woman who was an extraordinary. I mean, some of you may know of her. She was a fixture in commercials and television and film and just an amazing uh, teacher and mentor to so many people. But anyway, she got me set up when I came to LA. I was doing on camera stuff. And do you want to keep asking questions? Yeah, yeah, because I want to take that, that, first, uh, that first movie uh, that, that, that became. That wasn't your first uh, movie, okay, it was my but, but it was the movie that, that became the biggest of the ones you, that you did. Yeah. And what was that? Children of the Corn. Yeah. <laughs> she was in Children of the Corn. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was. It was actually kind of funny because when I auditioned for it, um, I was uh, not expecting to get it. I was, I, there was a call back between me and another young lady who had this long, beautiful brown hair. And I remember telling my agent, oh, she'll get it. She's gorgeous. And then when I got it, my agent said, oh, I think it was your weird hair. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> OK, great. You had weird hair? I had a nice, you guys remember, 80s perm. It was great. It was like all permed out. <laughs> Whatever. Some of you look like gorgeously like that. I paid for it. And it got me a gig. <laughs> Weird hair and, and, it, and an Italian mafioso background that I channeled to my... So, having only dubbed horror films, what's it like to be in one? It's so fun and weird <laughs> at the same weird. time. Because you walk weird. around the set and it's disturbingly, you know, uh, detailed. And like that church sequence, they really desecrated that church. It was really disturbing <laughs> to see the detail and the care and the passion that went into all the things that they did to that poor church. But they took over that town. It was really fun. 
Sioux City, Iowa. I don't know, it wasn't very, you know, glamorous, but the town was so supportive and the big explosion that they had at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the film, everybody came out to watch. It was just like this fun sort of small town vibe, but yeah, it was cool and creepy and they actually, another little uh, behind the scenes detail about the film is that last scene in the back seat of the car, or the, uh, that one, um, <laughs> They, he wrote that into the script while we were shooting. Wow. That wasn't the original ending. So, and uh, I wanted to do my own stunts, and I had a big pregnant belly pad thing. So going over the back seat of the car <laughs> was kind of awkward, but... No, you had a belly pad. You weren't pregnant. I had a belly pad. Got it, got it, okay. I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> I know, there are a lot of disturbing details there. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was, it was fun. It was really fun so you've done this movie, it comes out, it's mm -hmm. popular, mm -hmm. um, it does fairly well, yeah. um, and uh, so you're on your way. So how did you make the turn into voice acting? How did that happen? Um, well, back in the day, um, nobody really did voice acting but voice, voice actors, and we had sort of our own little corner of the world, and I actually had somebody say to me, gee, you have a great voice, you should do voiceovers, which we all hear now. But at the time, I gave my resume and headshot, no demo, nothing, to my friend who took it into a studio in Hollywood, I can remember, <laughs> and submitted it, and I got trained on the job. It was this really special and unique opportunity. And, and what was that show? And, oh, the, was it, which was the first thing? Oh, uh, was it? Really? The first one? Yeah. All right. Tony, it's, it's your career. You're supposed to know this. <laughs> so long ago, Tony. Yeah, so I think it was Robotech. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we met. This, this is actually is was working on Robotech. Yeah, and Tony and I have known each other, and I still work with some of the people. Maybe I won't give a number to the decades, but you know, the number, the group of people that I started with decades ago. None of you were alive yet. And so, yeah. <laughs> It's a wonderful community. It's a wonderful industry, and we we look out for each other, and, and it's been a real joy. So, um, to be a camera actor, you have to be real internal, and it has to. It's all about the eyes. It's all you do. You can't be very good. And self control. And self control. Voice acting is completely different. In, yes. in that, in that, it requires you to kind of to kind of get out of yourself and be yes. a little broader. And how did you find the balance point to, to find the comfort zone in that? It took it's time. For it's nuanced, yeah. yeah, and especially coming from a dance background and an improv background and a theater background, and then on camera, I got behind the mic and I didn't really know which way to go. So it did take a little. It was a little bit of a dance, you know, steps forward, steps back. Um, you know, I, I was even being told to pull it back for my on-camera work, you know, because I was used to being kind of bigger and broader. So eventually, um, it felt most natural for me to be behind the mic because I could be as physical as I was as a dancer, as physical as I was in improv and theater, and it, it became, you know, it's really my favorite because I can do it. I can look like Robin Williams behind the mic. I can be insanely physical, and it's so fun. <laughs> Someone called me uh, the anime Joe Cocker because of that. Because anyway. <laughs> um, so how? Okay, so so you, you kind of moved in the end. Did you did you start? Did you stay in anime or did you do different kinds of voice acting? Um, I did a yeah. I did a variety of things. Uh, I did a lot of uh, ADR. I did foreign film dubbing and um, commercials for television. Over you know voiceover commercials for television and radio. Um, yeah, but anime was the was I was sort of magnetized to it. I kept being pulled back to it, which was really fun. What do you find is the key difference between acting for anime mm -hmm. and other kinds of stuff? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, there's that it's definitely unique in um, sort of a, the drama element. I think is one way to describe it. I, I mean, if I'm if I'm going to separate, say, you know, commercial voiceover and um, uh, even the ADR, you know, dubbing uh, for foreign films, it's more theatrical, I think is the best way to describe it. And what I mean by that is it's more dramatic. You've got more colors and more dynamic, more range, more is required of you theatrically, you know, as a performer. 
Yeah. Well, okay, I, 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 I'm just gonna kind of zip forward here. Sure. We're gonna get to the fun part here soon. <laughs> um, the um, you, your what was your first anime that that where you played a main character? Oh, um, Magic Knight Ray Earth. <laughs> Can I tell a funny story about Please do, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, none of you probably are ever scared or overwhelmed by anything, but I was um, when I started this. And uh, Eric Sherman, uh, who's our head honcho, Eric and Jonathan at Bang Zoom, uh, was directing it at, at the time. And I actually tried to back out of it. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. I was, I was just kind of overwhelmed. I, I had two little ones, I think, at that time, and, and I was kind of overwhelmed and intimidated, and, and I, I'm at my family, a family gathering, and Eric's essentially yelling me on the phone, saying, you can't do this, you started it, you gotta get your butt over to the studio and finish this. And I realized, I mean, he did talk sense into me, and I, and I realized what, I, you know, that I needed to do that, and, you know, honor my commitment and not be afraid. So I'm really glad that I did, because it was the beginning of just a lovely relationship with Eric and Bang Zoom, and um, very, I fell in love with Hikaru. I, she's to this day probably one of my favorites. How many times do we get to Little Girl Warriors? I mean, there's more of it now, but for a long time, there really wasn't anything like that for us, for the women to do, you know? And I, I absolutely fell in love with her, so anyway, that's what so I was uh, uh, along those lines, I was doing Power Rangers, and, and we needed to a, a new monster. And I cast Wendy Lee as a monster, and nobody cast women as monsters yeah. back then. And she finished doing this big, Aah! she went, oh, I got to make boy voices. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I know just the little things that make us happy. <laughs> monsters is a big one for us small voice people. So as you as you moved along, what are you have a couple of memorable shows along that line when you first started that, that really kind of touched you or, oh, or excited you more about what, what you were doing? Well, I can I can talk. I can talk in generalities because there were characters that I played. Um, the announcer I think I did with you, that was so fun. Well, I want to talk about that separately, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right, oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, anytime I got to play, a ca I love wacky. I love the wacky characters. The sort of offbeat, crazy, like a little woo-woo, you know? Um, those are some of my favorites. So anytime I got to play a character that was just off the beaten path just a little bit, I found it so exciting and fun. Uh, it challenged me as an actress. And I got to sort of stretch, and I got to stretch my characterization, to stretch my voice, got to stretch myself as an actress. So, so let's mention that it's a it's a show called Real About High School. Mm -hmm. Anyone see that? Real About High School. It's pretty sick. It's pretty um, sick. <laughs> um, and you played a, a a girl who would who would call the, the K fights. So they had karate fights at the school, mm -hmm. and you would call it. But they were these tremendously long pieces that you couldn't breathe through. No. So talk a little bit about that. No, and, and I'm glad you actually mentioned that because it's, it's an instructional point too when I'm talking about actors and helping coach people that, uh, you know, you have this huge chunk of dialogue and the director keeps saying, can we do it one more time without taking a breath? And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you're fu we would find ways we'd sort of, you know, sculpt our, our breaths into portions of the chunk of dialogue, but it really was like a, <sighs> you know, I just go, and like spit it all out and go, 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 and um, super high energy, and it was a great sort of, um, what the word be like, um, like marathon training, you know, for being able to sustain the character, sustain the energy, actually say words that made sense, and keep the tempo that you needed to get through all the dialogue, right, with any yeah. sort of clarity, but it was very fun. Except for when the machine would pop out of record and you had to start over again. And I had to start over again. <laughs> that was back in the day, right? We didn't have the option of it. No, we'll cut and paste. Yeah, no, let's do the whole thing all over again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so beyond, be, going beyond that, you, you started, you, you eventually started teaching, you eventually started, now you're directing. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about your feelings about directing and how you approach that from an actor standpoint. If they, if they were to come to you mm -hmm. as, a, as an actor, how would you approach them? So, um, it, would you, do you want me to start with from a coaching standpoint or a directing it. standpoint? Okay, I'll start from a coaching standpoint because I direct similarly. From a coaching standpoint, uh, if you come to me as an actor, one of the things that I would like to do is hear where you're starting. Hear where you're starting. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, hear where you're coming from. And then my goal as a coach and, and 
and I'll translate this into directly too, but is to um, not only build your confidence so you get comfortable in your skin, but also get comfortable in your voice, but then help you get comfortable in the character's skin and the character's voice, right? So a lot of us come, we bring our insecure or untrained selves to whatever we voice, right? So first we have to get comfortable in our skin and let that voice out. You know, give it some support. So instead of kind of a nervous and a kind of voicing, I want you to, you know, relax. I'll coach you to relax. And I call that getting into your skin. It's like relax into your voice. So you feel it, you feel it in your body, and, and then you're gonna start to get into character. And that's where we do a little more of the analysis, um, understanding who the character is, understanding what they want, how they feel. I like to talk to my actors about thinking in character. We talk about that a lot if you work with me. Um, you want to think as the character, you want to feel as the character. Sometimes we'll approach characters the way we would, right? But your character has a whole different a template, right? A whole different story. So you want to be able to approach the lines, the scene, the story from the standpoint of being in the character's skin, which should be different, and most of the time is, from what you would naturally do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to that to that extent, to, to get the actor prepared for that, how sh what do you think a young actor should be focused on, you know, in terms of their training or in terms of what they need to work on first? Okay, good. From a standpoint of training, one of the things I always tell people who say, you know, I'm interested in voice acting, if they've got a good voice, um, I will always say get some theater training so you learn how to act on your feet, in your body, in your skin. Get some improv training so you get comfortable being messy and out of control, right? Very important, right? And then... That's the description of an, of an actor's life, by the way. Messy and out messy of control. Messy and out of control. Just control. <laughs> Make peace with it now. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, take voice acting classes so you learn how to bring that behind the mic. Sense? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, 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 so the training to get for the the transition from from the acting class to the microphone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have trouble making that jump. Uh, but why do you think that is, and what do you what could you recommend for that? Okay. I'm speaking well today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, nine nine. Um, Oh, well, usually in the class environment, one would hope you feel safe enough to take risks and try stuff. And you already tell yourself, I have permission to fail, right? If you're not telling yourself, you need to tell yourself that. Because the classroom environment should be the workshop environment, the place where you take risks, right? Okay, so now you get behind the mic at a job, for instance, and the first thing you think is, I'm going to suck. What if I suck? They're going to hate me. I'm going to lose my job. I mean, this is normal. I'm not trying to put words into your head. Okay, but this is like the normal kind of, you know, processing that can happen. So the first thing to say to you is if you have the job, you got the job, they already like you, they already want you, the essence of who you are and what you brought to the character is exactly what they want. Now, when you get, when you're doing the job, there's directing, there's fine tuning, there are adjustments and calibrations that are going to be made. So it's not too different from the workshop environment in that sense. In our workshops, the actors come up and they try stuff and we direct you and we make calibrations, we make little adjustments to your read to get it closer to what would be a good dialed in performance for the characterization. When you're doing a job, it's really no different. You're there, they want you there, so you can't lose in that sense. Everybody's in your favor, and they'll just be making adjustments with you, and get, you know anticipate that. Don't be surprised when that happens. Sometimes you'll spend half of your session getting the voice dialed in exactly right, especially if it's a character that's going to endure past just one one day uh, of work. And uh, if you have a series regular role or recurring character, they're going to want to spend time dialing that voice in. So when, when you're approaching character, either as a director or as an actor, mm -hmm. what do you focus on first? Are you focused on, on, the, on the emotion, the context, the scene, the words? Where do you place your focus? <clears throat> okay. Where do you have your actors place their focus? It kind of depends on what my actors are bringing at that point. I, I will take them you know, where I want them to go. But some of the things I look at, for instance, I'll start with a classroom dynamic. 
Um, and after we'll come up, he'll do, he or she will do a read for me. And one of the first things I listen for is, do they know who they are? Okay, and we talk in class about how the more specific you are, the more specific your read's gonna be. If you don't know who you are, we can't tell who you are, right? But then one of the other things I talk about in class is you need to make some decisions here, and that's the, you know, who am I? How do I feel about who I'm talking to? How do I feel about what I'm talking about? So you need to make some decisions. You know, how old I am. You know, know who your character is. But you also need to get connected here, physically, emotionally. Find out how the character moves. Find out how the character feels. Let yourself feel in character. So you're making connections here. You're making connections here. If you are doing work here and here, it's going to be reflected out of your mouth. Send it like gangster for a second. Oh, that's true. It's going to be reflected Absolutely. out of your mouth, okay? So, because we can tell, you can tell if there's disconnect here by what comes out of the mouth. We can just hear it. We can also tell if you're smiling, frowning, mm -hmm. depressed, happy, because mm -hmm. it all comes out, mm -hmm. all of it, other than the audio. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what is the most important thing for the actor to focus on, specifically? you got to focus on one thing mm -hmm. when you first start working. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would you put the focus on? Um, that's a good question. When you first start working? When you first start. Like when you come to a session or when you no, first No, when you first start. begin your career. Okay, so when you... Oh. As an actor, right? As a professional actor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get out of college. Oh, gosh. Or you get out of, or you get out of your, mm -hmm. your, your, your workshops and now you're trying to jump into the professional world. And I've been, I'm auditioning, Ooh. what do I do, what do I focus on? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would say the caliber of your work. So a lot of times we get so busy with the business of the business that we get ahead of ourselves and we're not actually digging deep as a performer. And I don't know if I'm, if I'm going backwards and not answering your question specifically, but that's one of the things I see that actors are very eager to move forward. Like I've got a great voice, I had somebody do a demo for me for 50 bucks, so I'm ready to go, and so, you know, I mean, really, honestly, I'm sorry, <laughs> so I have, not against actors, but against a, a community that can, a community that can take advantage of actors. So, yes, but the do. idea is develop yourself as a performer. So that whenever you get behind a mic, you're excellent. You know what to do. Um, I talked to one of my actors just this week about this, that um, when you get behind the mic, you want to have ownership of the character. You want to know how to access that character. So if you're going to call yourself a voice actor and you're going to start auditioning, make sure that you have a, sort of a, I would call it a portfolio or a backpack or um, you know, your, your, whatever you call it, your ditty bag, whatever you want to call it, of characters that you own, so that if you get behind the mic and somebody's directing you, I can take you anywhere and you can maintain that character. You can go through any kind of emotional arc, range, you can go anywhere you need to go in character and hold on to it, and if I make a lot of adjustments, you know exactly how to get back to that character. Okay, so if you own it, that means you can do anything in character, and if I can make adjustments and you can hold on to it, then you're, you're ready to perform and work professionally in that character. My recommendation is to have at least 10 characters like that. If you're going to put a demo together, you should have at least, that's just me, at least 10 characters that you own. At least. That and, you and, and understand, ten characters won't fit on a demo. It won't. It's too many. It's you not need about more, ten you need more characters than you need for the demo in order to have variety. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I will always tailor people back to their most competitive voices. But one of the things to consider too is if you think in terms of not, oh, I'm going to put a demo together. I need to have, you know, I, I got five voices, so I don't know, and I'm ready to go. Yes and no. If you step into a session and the director goes, can you give me a six-year-old version of that voice? And you're like a deer in the headlights, because you haven't explored the range and dynamic in that character, right? And my females that I work with that have cute little girl voices, we want to make sure, <laughs> we want to make sure that you've got range and dynamic and you're directable in that character. So it's not one character, it could be 30 characters. It could be 20 characters. Does that make sense, guys? 
right? So you're creating a template. Every character on your demo, think in terms of it being a template. So it's the basis, a foundation for maybe 10 characters, right? Are you following me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's actually more important to have quality than quantity. Mm -hmm. So if you only have 30 seconds worth of good voices, then that's your demo. You don't add a bunch in that are not working. Mm -hmm. so. But have them. Because when you get called on to do that voice, you want to have the freedom and the flexibility, right, in your character, in your voice, in your range, that you could go anywhere that you need to go. Yeah. So we, we're running a little ahead, so okay. I, want, I want to take some questions from them since okay. we have some time. Do you have any okay. questions? Anybody have a question they'd like to ask before we move on to the next section? Go for it. Um, that's a good question. Uh, two words, improv and theater. Because again, it gets you comfortable with being bigger than life, larger than life, which it will help you behind the mic. That answers your question. One more. Okay, so you're saying your parallel tracks. Okay, so the physicalization of the character will help a lot. So um, get to know the physical life of the character and let you let yourself uh, be physical behind the mic. All right. The more you are, I've heard it said that yeah, some people will direct you. You know, you use your arms in a grand gesture if you're playing a character that needs that, and the voice will follow the hand. I would say the voice will follow the body. So that physicalization will help your voice get bigger too. So if, for instance, if I'm behind a mic, hold this for a second. Okay. Um, I recently. I know. Right? Go. Um, okay. So if I'm playing, I break a sweat when I record. So if I'm playing uh, a, a cute little girl voice, my voice is very small. But if I'm playing like an Amazonian goddess, <laughs> you see that the physicality is is unleashed, supported, and encouraged by a strength and a movement and a stance. My stance changed too, I have one leg out. So um, I, I deeply encourage you to do that, to explore the physicality, because it will help. You know, you don't have a camera locked in on your face and it's all right here. You know, the mic's there, so you gotta, you know, to a degree, you know, work around the mic, but still, your posturing, your positioning, the physicality is gonna help unleash a bigger voice, bigger characterization. I had no idea you could be an Amazon queen. Nobody believes me, but I actually, I actually am. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Yes. This is too journey. I see you got a role of this beauty being called uh, a telling Do you have to name um, name on the Aurora? Have you ever played that game? Have you ever played until you were alone? I, I have not. I, I'm sorry to say. I have not played the game, I'm sorry. Well, most of us don't, are working, that we don't have time. <laughs> I know. Ever seen people say, do you go home and watch your stuff? No. No, I don't have time. <laughs> Which is a nice problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. So you've recently started teaching. Yes. For us, for, for eventually yes. voice acting. And, and you, you've, uh, I, I will tell you just from my opinion, I've watched that you do miracles with people. Um, um, and, and tell me a little bit about the classes you teach and, and, and why, what is it about it that you think is working so well with these people? Oh, thanks, Tony. Um, well, uh, okay, 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 good. Yeah, because we're going to do a little bit of that. Um, uh, first of all, I really do love teaching, uh, a lot. And um, I get some pretty amazing students at Bang Zoom too. So it's a wonderfully safe environment, um, very encouraging and nurturing. So it becomes a place where some lovely things can happen. Um, I will say sort of probably my grand secret, those who are closest to me know this, that I'm a person of faith. So I do actually pray for my students before classes start. And um, I'm always looking for that key that's going to help my students uh, bust open, you know, break loose. And um, we have done everything from physical challenges, uh, holding chairs over the head. Were you in that class? 
I don't remember. Tyler, we've we've done um, whatever it takes. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Sign a waiver. I always check. Um, but my my goal, it's a very personal process for each actor. So my goal is to help them step over what their personal boundary or limit might be. And sometimes it's just as simple as having a hard time seeing themselves doing what is required. And I know that they can. When students are there and working, I can tell what they've got inside. I can just see it. And so we play around with different things until we find that that thing that helps them cross over, sounds very dark and foreboding, but that helps them get through their own personal wall. Um, I do a lot of physical tricks, like, you know, what I was just talking about, physicality. Uh, is Kimberly in here? Uh, we, we did karate for one of, one of my actresses. Uh, she did karate moves with every single line to help her get comfortable, to help her get physical. Um, usually... I would pull something. Yeah. You're gonna pull, oh, you would pull something? <laughs> yeah. So, um, again, it's, it's a very personal and very intimate process. Um, I just do my best to tune into the individual and give them that extra little push. Hey, I want to touch on something here, because it's come up in the other panels, you mentioned your person of faith, mm -hmm. and it's about setting limits. Oh, right. This is a business where they want you to do everything, they, you know, and they, they went, no matter how period or however weird, and people think that they can't set limits and, and, and they, they, they have to go along with it, which is what's led, I believe, to me too, and a lot of other things like that. Mm -hmm. So talk about setting limits, because you very, very definitely set limits. Okay, thanks, Tony. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, it was sort of unconscious. Um, when it really started for me was when I had my little kids. And I started to think in terms of would I feel comfortable being a part of something I wouldn't ever feel comfortable having my kids watch. And so that was where the boundary started for me. And then uh, just personal, um, personal boundaries saying, you know, there, there were a couple of times when I'd be in the middle of a job and scenes would pop up that I personally just felt un uncomfortable with, you know, not, not in a, this shouldn't be being made way, but just personally, me as a human being, when I act, and it's not uncommon, guys, as actors, we need to be 100% present. We need to be 100% committed and 100% open to do our characterizations. So I didn't feel comfortable like I could do that. I couldn't do it justice because there was a part of me that was like, find your happy place. You know, I was just like not, because I was not comfortable. So it, it was a two-edged sword in the sense that I can't do it justice, and I don't feel comfortable being a part of it. And that's when I started setting, you know, more boundaries. And it turns out that it was okay, wasn't and it? And it was, it was okay. I, I um, you know, candidly, there, there was a whole sort of, you know, corner of the industry that I didn't work in, but I didn't miss it because I had plenty of other things that I was able to do. And I also felt comfortable because I knew I could contribute wholeheartedly to the projects that I was working on without, whole, again, remember I was telling you just a few moments ago, we can tell if there's a disconnect here. So if you don't feel comfortable doing something, we're gonna hear it. Because there is going to be a level of, you know, a part of you that's tucked back, you know, and not participating. So, um, yeah, I haven't missed out. I, I have had a blast. So the moral is, as you move forward your career, don't be afraid to set limits. Don't be in... Don't allow yourself to be talking doing something you don't want to do, or that you're uncomfortable doing, or that violates your own personal moralities. Mm -hmm. It's really important, and, and no matter what Hollywood tells you, mm -hmm. oh, well, you'll never work in this town, yeah. we all work together. Yes, we did. <laughs> and it does, honestly, it does open some doors that might not have been opened if you hadn't, because it gets attention. And not, I'm not saying to do it because of that, but it does garner a degree of respect to just hear that you you care enough about yourself and about your professionalism as a performer to be a person of integrity wherever you work, however you work. And that does garner positive attention as well. So I do encourage you to feel comfortable doing that. All right. So we're going to play a little bit. We're going to let some of you guys come up and try out a little bit. We've got some what's, what's it's essentially audition copy. 
um, uh, uh, that, uh, that Julie has used, Julie, Julie uses in her classes. I need to reset every so often, it's kind of like the, the reboot button. Um, and so, we're gonna break some people up, we're gonna direct you a little bit, and then get a little bit of critique, and, uh, and uh, so anybody wanna play? All right, uh, you right there. Oh, you still got it, Tony. If that was six inches taller, I'd be in the hospital right now. All right, so, um, Which one does she have on the back? So you. why don't you describe the character while I said over mic? Okay. Okay, so, oh, hi, sorry. Hello, what's your name, sweetie? I'm Greggy. Greggy? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that right. Hi, I'm Hi. Okay, so, um, this is a creature, okay? And that's an important little detail, right? It is, it was voiced by a female, but it has sort of a boy, you know, scratchy little cute little boy voice. Um, which women often do. Uh, he's very impetuous, uh, impulsive, emotional, also fiercely loyal to his buddy, uh, Graham. And um, yeah, uh, he's a little dragon. So he's a little hothead, okay? All right, do you have any questions? Always ask questions, guys, no pressure. If, if I answer all your questions, that's all right. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, you can read a little. Mm -hmm. Loyal. Uh huh. So it was a little boy voice with a bit of a rasp, and so uh -huh. uh, should I lean more into making it sound more boyish, or just lean into the rasp? You know what? Whatever you can do. Uh, so uh, feel what feels right to you. Yeah, whatever you feel like you can do naturally. Uh, little detail, guys. I'll take it as a quick teaching moment. Uh, when you create a character, you want to create a character that you can sustain. <laughs> so if you if you hear, okay, it's a little boy character, but you can't do little boys, then do a cute little girl that's got kind of a rat. Okay? So, but it's something that you can do. It's your version of it. Okay. Yes, we often burst into spontaneous voices. <laughs> And this is exactly the way we do it. We always have a couple hundred people watching and auditions. <laughs> and the biggest thing is have fun. Right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Adam, you jerk, you inconsiderate poop. You had me worried. What did you do that to me for? You owe me for this. What'd you just say to me? Those rotten little brats went too far. I can't make up my mind. What do I need to buy first? What? Hey, lady, I ain't no lizard. <laughs> I like the head. <laughs> that's important, by the way. That physicality. She was talking about that. That physicality. That give them a little attitude. That's that's important. That comes across on the microphone. You want to give them a little? I critique? like that. Yeah, super fun. Okay, one little detail. Sort of a childish voice. Right? So do you think you can make it, and if the character is tinier, do you think you can make your voice just a little tinier? All right, let's, Okay, let's play with that and give me a little, um, Here we go, one more time. cry on that, okay? In three, get right in front of the mic. In three, two, one. Oh, you jerk, you inconsiderate poop. You had me worried. What'd you do that for? You owe me for this. What'd you just do to me? Those rotten little brats went too far. I can't make up my own mind. What do I need to buy first? What? Hey, li Excuse me. <laughs> what? Hey, look, lady, I ain't no lizard. Okay, how many passes do I get? Do we have to do one more? You do one. Okay, we're gonna do one more. Okay, good. So now we got her kind of cuter. Um, now, because she's a creature, I'm gonna see if we can put a little, like something kind of cute. Can you kind of maybe Pinch it just a little bit, so it sounds kind of like, um, more creature-ish. Okay, try your face. Just like this, like, oh, you jerk, you idiot! See what happens. All right. Switch your face a little more. Three, two, one. Oh, you jerk, you inconsiderate poop! You had me worried. What'd you do that for? You owe me for this. What'd you just do to me? Those rotten little brats went too far! I can't make up my mind. What do I bite first? What? Hey, look, lady, I ain't no lizard. Okay, that was Excellent. Nice. 
job. Excellent job. Nice. So you guys see, sometimes it's something as simple as what you're doing with your body or your face to change the sound of the voice. She had the elements there. We were kind of dancing around a little bit. And that one little detail dialed in a unique characterization. Like the first two were kind of cute, right? You might hear maybe 20 of those in the auditions, right? But that last one bumped it up into a unique version. That's your kid. Good, give it a hand. Well, let's play. All right, you. You. So I love this, 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 this character's called Arrogant Leader, so. <laughs> you are not typecast. Okay. We know nothing about you. Okay, so he's a captain. So one of the first things you want to do is you're, a, you're just, look, just looking at you, you're sweet, right? But he is arrogant. So let's look at your posture, right? How would he stand? How would he move? Look at his outfit, he's kind of fussy, right? So if he, look at his, the way he's dressed, right? How would he, how would he stand and move? So get right now in the posture that he might have. Right? Right, very nice. Exactly, so he's a little arrogant. Okay, his uh, range of the voice they said is low, uh, a little insistent, and a little entitled. So I don't know if you're a bossy, insistent, or entitled person, probably not. <laughs> so you have to think in terms of um, somebody that you, you know who sounds like that, or a character that you know that sounds like that, or if you can picture that character, you want to kind of get in their skin a little bit. And let the voice follow the attitude and the posturing. Mm. See, you're already in hmm. It's already a good step. Okay, all right? And just relax. And the voice being low suggests that it's going to come from a confidence from his diaphragm. Mm. Okay? So start with that mm. That's a nice way to start. <laughs> Three, two, one. Mm. Your swordsmanship highlights the prowess of your family history. Okay. <laughs> Good. However, the same cannot be said for your strategy and tactics. I'm sure you thought to achieve some sort of advantage by using locals, but I fear you may have gone just a tad overboard. I'm afraid this entire affair has become a matter of honor to us. And that honor must be satisfied now! <laughs> Wow. Okay, did the physicality and the attitude adjustments at the beginning help you kind of know what to shoot for? Yes, definitely. I'm just really pleased with that voice that came out of you. Honestly, the only direction I would give you if we were working, if we were actually recording this, would be to look for now that you've got that, we call that the foundation of the voice, right? Sort of the emotional core of the voice. So now I want to look for the dynamic from line to line. Don't lose the voice, but like the first line says, thoughtful, observant, so he's going to have a certain attitude with that. Strong and authoritative, so he's going to have a little bit of a strength and maybe be a little more clipped in that, but the voice is still the same. So let's play with that. Let's go from line to line and take a moment, don't feel like you have to rush, calculating and confident. So that's going to have a different, no, the line in the three is going to have another different, slightly different dynamic. So let's give it a shot. All right, and when you say, uh, like, flipping, does that mean, like, more sharp when I, when I talk? Yeah, it's a little more, um, however, the same cannot be said. So it's crisp, think of crisp. Um, yeah, authoritative, he's not messing around, he's not taking his time, he's getting right down to business. Crisp. Well, we'll see how. Yeah, just don't get too. I don't want to confuse you too much because the voice came out. It was just great. Okay. I just want to look from variation from line to line. Okay. All right. Same guy. Get the posture. Get the attitude. Three, two, one. Your swordsmanship highlights the promise of your family history. However, 
The same cannot be said for your strategy and tactics. I'm sure you thought to achieve some sort of advantage by using locals, but I fear that you may have just gone a tad overboard. I'm afraid this entire affair has become a matter of honor to us. And that honor must be satisfied now! Great job. Wonderful. So every actor is a little bit different, but you uh, dialed the character in right away when you understood the attitude and the physicality. Okay? So remember that when you're creating characters, go there first. All right, thank you so much. Right, give a big hand. Who else wants to play? Okay, uh, strike. Yes. So it's called Big Sister Female. She turned around so I can put this up like before I get to the end. Okay. Cool. Okay, interesting voice already. All right, so the description is she's got a slightly higher range, okay? But if that's not a natural placement for you, that's okay, but keep her youthful, and that will help you find that balance. And she's very warm, very friendly, very caring. She's a very sincere character, cares about family. She's kind, the oldest of three sisters, uh, watches over her younger siblings. Okay, so sweet, caring, kind. Uh, so gentle, gentle manner of speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so keep, try to keep her youthful sounding, but very, just very warm and kind. Like anybody that you care about in your life that you would take time to speak to sensitively, Try to bring that into her tone. Okay? So here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, there, there. It'll be all right. I know how you feel. Please come in. Come in and join us if you'd like. I'll put on some tea, all right? Fine then. Go, just go ahead and do what you want. I'm done giving you advice. It's not like you listen anyway. This will cost over 3,000 yen. We don't have that kind of money. It's not your fault. It's okay. I know, let's give him some space. He might need it right now. Okay, sweet. So you have a very interesting, it's so tempting for me to give you, like, do this in a dialect, but you have a, a very interesting voice. So one of the things that, and, and this is something to know about yourself, guys, as an actor, like your sort of default setting, right? So if your default setting is, is strong or edgy or sarcastic. Mine is cutesy, unfortunately. I'm, it, it, there's nothing I can do about it, right? Like Tony said, I don't see you as an Amazonian goddess. You know, so you have to know what your default setting is so you know if you play something that's different than your natural vocal setting, then you're gonna have to work a little bit harder. So I hear sort of like strong, maybe a little sarcasm coming out of you just a little, maybe just a little. So you are gonna have to work a little harder to warm her up. Uh, do you have some younger siblings? I'm the younger sibling. You are. That's why you're sassy. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, so that's good to know. <laughs> do you have any little nephews or nieces or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I got one. I'm eight years older. One, I'm ten years older, and then they're one, older I'm... than you. You are the younger. Okay. All right. No, 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 I'm ten years older than them. Oh, you're ten years older than them. Okay. So, do you change your tone when you talk to them? Uh, not really. But there's one where I. Where I kind of change it a bit. Okay. I don't okay. like using the little kid voice. Okay. Like, so. No, I totally understand. So I'm going to have you try this. Let's think in terms of a motherly voice. Okay? So one of the things you're going to want to do is soften your face because you naturally have your voice kind of comes through your nose, which is an interesting, it's a, a nice sound. I like it. It's very unique. Right? But you're going to want to soften it just a little. Try not to push the air through your nose quite as much. Maybe let the voice, that, put your hand right here on your chest. And can you feel it? Can you feel it if you say something right now? Can you feel it going to resonate there? Uh, yeah, I can feel it. I feel it in the nose now that you mentioned it. I don't want you to be self-conscious, but I want you to keep your hand on your chest for the whole read. And I want you to let that voice come from that place. Okay? 
Keep letting it, so you're gonna have to relax. Nerves, we're gonna go to our, you know, we're gonna squeeze it right up naturally. I'm just cold. Okay, good, me too, sorry. Okay, so, so I want you to think in terms of, feel the resonance right here the whole time, all right? Go ahead and face the mic, sweetie. There you go. Oh, they're there. It'll be all right, I know. Yeah, slow down just a little. Go ahead, one more time. Oh, they're there. It'll be all right. I know how you feel. Ladies, come in and join us if you'd like. I'll put on some tea, all right? Now, hold on a sec. Do you feel it in your, on your hand? Do you feel it right here? Okay, good. So take your time, slow it down a little bit. Your natural tempo is kind of taking over. Let's slow it down and let's get in her tempo a little. Go ahead. Fine, then. Just go ahead and do what you want. I'm giving you, I'm done giving you advice. It's not like you listen anyway. This will cost over 3,000 yen. We don't have that kind of money. It's not your fault. It's okay. I know, let's give him some space. He might need it right now. Can we do pick up the last line real quick? She's very kind of melancholy and sad in the last line. So I want to hear that. See if we have a little bit of that music on that line number six. Oh, no. Let's give him some space. He might need it right now. Okay, good. Good. That was much better. So, guys, this is just a little trick. Uh, if your voice naturally comes from some place that's different than where you need it to come from for your characterization, sometimes something as simple as, and we, we've done this before, touching the part of your body that you want to focus the voice coming from, right? Just gives you an awareness of it, right? And eventually you won't have to do that anymore, but it's a good way just to get used to your voice coming from a different place in your body. When Erica Harlicker is doing uh, Kurapita in Hunter x Hunter, in order, her voice is much higher than in order to remind her, so she always puts your finger right on her chest. So that's where the voice comes from in order to remind her to place it there. So that's, 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 it's a thing. It's a common thing we all do. All right? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Let's yeah. get Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. All right, so who wants to play? All right. Uh, you. So this is the fun adventure. Okay. <clears throat> You notice these are character archetypes. But <laughs> <laughs> you find them in most of the <laughs> Okay, so this guy, he's a young man, and he is literally a fun adventurer. He just loves to uh, push the envelope, he's searching for his father, so he's really trying to explore to find out where his father has gone. Um, happy go lucky. No hand. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. I don't need to tell you anything else you know. Okay, good. So this is from what? Grand 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 Blue. Grand Yeah. So most of the stuff we're giving you is actually real stuff that we used in the real world. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not faking it. Um, okay, good. So now, um, depending on where your voice lands, you see uh, the range is like. Lower range. Okay. So the range is like 15 to 18. So, you're probably going to be closer to the 17, 18. Um, do your best to lighten it up just a tad. And what I mean by that is, guys, if you're playing a character that's younger than where your natural voice lands, we talk, we talk about just thinning it or lightening up a little. So instead of, you know, coming from the testosterone gut thing, you're going to just let it come either from the chest or even from the throat. So it thins it out a little. You have a little less support. Uh, and it lightens it up just a tad. It can help it sound just a little younger. But let's just see what you got. Friendly, energetic, trustworthy. He's a very, he's a, you know, a teenage boy, so he's, he's really kind of uh, energetic and, and very dramatic. Hello, guys, you're all right. If you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. So then, what's your name? Are you all right? Tell me whatever you can remember. Anything is okay. Come on, I've always dreamed of traveling as far as I could. But there's one special place I want to see. You gave half your life to, to help me. I remember that moment when you held out your hand. The one who took it, who wanted to live, was me. Bahamut! Duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Love the first three. Okay, very good. So now what we're 
we're going to do is something we talked about a few moments ago. What I want you to think about is who you're talking to in each, with each line. And I want you to try to imagine the scene. Even if you don't completely understand it, I want you to see yourself in the middle of the story. Guys, when you have a line on copy like this, this is what it looks like. Each line is not just a standalone line. It's in the middle of a story. It's in the middle of a scene. So when you read it, you want to make sure you read it with that story in mind around you, okay? All right. Let's do another one. Think about who you're talking to each time. Take your time. Don't rush. If you're ever talking... I'm going to talk just for a second longer. If you guys are ever talking in character about dreaming or thinking, I want to hear that you're... I want to hear that. I want to hear that the dreaming. Come on. I've always dreamed of traveling as far as I could. I want to hear it. See what I mean? Yeah, you want to hear that. The thought in the words, so you're not just saying it. All right, let's give it a shot. <clears throat> Hello, I'm glad you're all right. If you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. Okay, quick comma. That was excellent. I want you to slow it down a little bit, okay? Because there's a couple of things happening in that line. It's not all the same all the way through, okay? Let's go ahead and give another shot. Hello. Glad you're all right. If you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. Good, I'm gonna do one more time. I like the energy of the first read. I don't want you to lose that because it's okay to be cheerful and welcoming, but then really say, like, if you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. So again, you're really talking to somebody. Gotcha. Right, go ahead. Hello, glad you're all right. If you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. And one more, you're almost there. Hmm? Cheerful and welcoming on the first part, and then really talk to them in the second part. Don't worry about losing your energy, because it was very nice when it was energetic and cheerful. I don't want you to lose that. Hello! Glad you're all right. If you're in trouble, we'd be happy to help you. Okay, go ahead to the next one. So then, what's your name? Are you all right? Tell me whatever you can remember. Anything is okay. Okay, it's going to Come on, I've always dreamed of traveling as far as I could. And there's one special place I want to see. You gave half your life to help me. I remember that moment. When you held out your hand, the one who took it, the one who wanted to live, was me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please applaud for that. Please don't. <laughs> I, can, I can dial up guys. It just went all up. It's all right. It's no, okay. very nice. Mohammed! <laughs> that was fantastic. Yes, and so you guys can see what a difference it makes when you take the time to actually talk to somebody or actually talk about something or let yourself feel the emotions in character and let that color the line, let that influence the way the line comes out. Very nice. And Very when you nice take that. that further into the theater, when you're doing auditions, like live auditions for theater, make sure you put a person there to talk to. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know where that person is and talk to them. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Nice, nice job. Very nice. And one more uh, Here, I bet. I thought you called that person by name. What's your name, sweetie? Jessica, but I, I realized she said eye patch. I thought, wow, what an exotic name. <laughs> Jessica's pretty too. And I'm sorry, I'm too small for this. <laughs> no, you're not. You're just right. Have you seen her? You probably got a couple inches on me. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be fun for you. She's a little warrior, right? Uh, lives by the sword. So you got to think in terms of if she uses the sword, if she lives by it, there's going to be a, a physical connection to what she does, a physical response to how she speaks, okay? Um, the, the description of her voice, sort of no-nonsense, strong, cold, um, but there's going to be a power and a confidence there, okay? Now they're looking for the age range of about 30s again. Uh, you don't look 30. So I would say, you know, find, find the strong, female voice that you've got inside of you for this character. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. In three. Three, two, one. We don't owe you any answers. 
Quit jabbing and get to the point. What were you even doing here? Resisting will end with you on your knees. You're right not, you're right not to believe him. With that kind of mindset, you will be able to protect what you're supposed to protect. So, I've lost. Despicable. The to to toy with the corpse of a heroic spirit? How could you? I right, first of all, you guys have been great with these cold readings, by the way. I'm like, I have to remind myself that I haven't ever seen this. Uh, you guys are doing great. In case you had to tell it, cold reading is a big part of what we do in our lives, so. You just you get the script and you really haven't had a chance to work it out. So I'm really proud of you guys. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, do you have any kind of physical in your background, anything? Um, martial arts, dance? Okay, goody. Because that's kind of what I was picturing. Do we have like a, uh, maybe, no, no mic stand? Can you hold it for her? Okay, sweetie. So this is what I want you to do for each line, all right? Here, why don't you look at me just real quick, okay? We don't owe you answers, all right? You're gonna, you can look at me for a second, I won't start. Okay, I want you to do something physical for each line. Quit your jabbering, get to the point. So you see that physicality is like, it's like emphasizing the words, it's giving some strength to it. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah. You're so sweet, you're like, I don't wanna scare you. But I want you to do something, some physical, strong, same sort of explosive thing that you would do with, with karate. But I want you to do some kind of a movement that's strong to punctuate each line, okay? Sorry, you're the guinea pig for this. Tony will hold it. Your hands are free. We don't owe you any answers. Quit your jaggering. Get to the point. What do you even? What were you even doing here? Resisting will end you on, with you on your knees. Okay, stop real quick. So far, great. Number three. So far, great. Number three. I, you really have to be strong. Resisting. <coughs> be really strong. Resisting will end you with you on your knees. Now number four is going to be tricky because it's cold and calculating, but it's still strong. So okay. I still need a physical move, something of strength, even if you make a fist, okay? Okay. You're not right to believe him. One more time. You're right not to believe in him. You're right not to believe him. Good. Good. One more. You're almost there. You're not right to believe him. You're right not to believe him. You're right not to believe him. Very good. Okay, it's going to five. You're frustrated, but you're still strong. With that kind of mindset, you not you you'll never be able to protect what you're supposed to protect. Good. Now this same character defeated and exhausted. Okay, number six. Okay. So I have lost. Good. One more time. So have I lost? So have I lost? Okay. Now this same character furious and shocked and angry. Despicable with to toy with the corpse with his of a heroic spirit. How could you? Yeah. We have, we have a little bit more time for questions. So we have any questions? Any burning questions out there? Yes or that? Kiefer Sutherland! Kiefer, what? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me to tell you. I, I have nothing. I know. <laughs> I met Donald once, so I can help. <laughs> <laughs> any more questions? There was another one over here somewhere. Yes. Well, Tony, don't you go up and do Yeah, we haven't actually have in a while. San Francisco's gotten so expensive, we can't afford the studios up there anymore. They actually charge about twice what I paid in New York uh, for studios up there right now. Um, there, there is a place called... Voice Tracks West. Thank you. Voice Tracks. But not, it's not West. Voice Tracks West is down in Los Angeles, but it's Voice Tracks up there. Uh, there's also, there's a, and I would start there, there's two places, Voice Tracks and there's another one, 
which have good voice uh, voice training. It's mostly in commercials, but that's the kind of voice work that's available up there. So uh, I, and I would I recommend that, and I'd recommend driving down to LA and taking my classes. <laughs> We actually do some, I, we're trying to get back to San Francisco, we used to go every year, so we're trying to get back there and we'll let you know. If you, if you go down to our booth, I forgot the commercial, uh, we are giving away, Adventure Voice Acting, we are giving away uh, uh, a, a three intro to voice acting classes at $325 value, you just gotta go and sign up. Signing up puts you on our email list and then we'll give you, anytime we're doing one, we'll let you know where, where we are. Because we also work in Dallas and New York and Chicago. Anytime? So that's it for more questions. Yes? Me? <laughs> I was offered a job. I, I was offered a job as a runner. That's like a messenger, basically going from place to place for a post-production company that was doing at the time Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. They had just come off of Star Wars. Okay, and I was an actor. I am not going to do post-production. I'm an actor <laughs> who now makes his living in post-production. <laughs> so I would not turn down that job. That's actually a really great question. I have a friend that, which is gonna contradict what we were talking about earlier, where she said, don't ever say no to anything. Okay, so I'm not saying that. But I am, I am saying this, that I am where I am because I kept walking through doors, though they may have seemed random, doors of opportunity that pulled me a little to the left and a little to the right and a little to the left and a little to the right. I was a professional mind for a while. Right? Wasn't on my bucket list, but I use that. I use that to this day. A lot of my physicalization is because I had to learn how to communicate without words, and now I get to do it. Yeah, right, I get paid to talk too much in class. But the point is that um, there are maybe opportunities, like Tony was saying, that seem to pull you a little to the left and a little to the right. All of the things that I did leave room for, make room for, have added to me as a performer and um, increased my understanding of characters, increased my flexibility as a performer, um, just added so much to me even as a person. And also, you never know, this is a very small world, the entertainment industry, um, you never know who you're working with that one day may be doing this and you know, five years down the line is producing you know, an animated series and remembers you because of the caliber of person you were or the caliber of talent that you were when you were doing something entirely different. So you just never know. So that that's what I learned. People often ask me how was I got involved in Power Rangers? How did I become the Power Rangers writer, or producer, or whatever? And it's the, the answer is because I said yes. You know, there was a there was a job there, an opportunity, and I went, okay, let's see what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. I actually went home that night and I called my and I talked to my wife and I'm saying, Well, I'm gonna be developing a new television show from scratch and I have to write it, I'm gonna run the story. And she goes, Do, do you know how to do that? And I yeah, we'll figure it out. I guess we'll find out tomorrow, won't we? <laughs> but that's a very important part of making of making a career happen, is being open to the opportunities and saying yes and trying things out, not being afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. If you're not failing once in a while, you're not trying hard enough. Mm -hmm. And in this business, it's helpful if you fail to fail spectacularly. Really trying something different and new, because they respect that. Um, what they don't respect is hiding and, uh, and not going for it. So. Yeah. We'll only add to you. So, we'll take anything any more questions? Yes. Uh, just, this is how I can learn to point, because I, I realized what I was doing with the yell for, for a character before. I kind of. If there's a dial here where there's a 10, I kind of ended up pushing it to 11. What, given the nature of anime and how oftentimes you have characters screaming at the top of the lungs, whatever, what is like? I just had to, I had well, first of all, if you scream like that, you're not going to last. You're just not going to last through the two hours because you're screaming from your throat. It's very hard. You have to control the breath a little bit so that you're not putting so much pressure on your vocal cords. And that, that's one way. Another way is you don't start at full breath. The Japanese love to do this. Ah, they're right at full breath, right at the bed. Ramp into it. Ah, you know, that gives you an extra couple of seconds. It also doesn't strain you quite so much. And the thirdly is to know that you don't want to put everything there. If you, if you notice in the world, when you're out there, you don't give everything you got, ever. Even when you're angry, unless you're a psychopath. When you're, <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. Unless you're, you're a psychopath, psychopath, if you're really angry, you, you, you always still hold back a little bit, otherwise you kill somebody. 
So, and whenever we're dealing with that, so then that becomes powerful. You use a little bit of hold that. I want to scream, but I'm going to hold it back a little bit. It actually gives a lot of, it gives some more interesting energy. And the example I use in class is, I can be angry or I can be angry. Which one's more powerful? You don't have to shout to do it. You just can get that power and just pull back a little bit. It's the nuance of self-control, but also being able to manage the voice and temper it. That's the calibrations I was talking about earlier. You're calibrating how much of the voice you release, how large a yell, how much support you're lending to it. Those are calibrations and that's nuance and it, it comes as you're developing With practice, yeah. Yeah, your, your control over the voices that you've got mm -hmm. over time. Yeah, there's actually a technique that I was taught when I was from a singing coach that I had at one point, which was to just completely Take the core down completely. If I have to, if I have to be in, in if I have to be uh, quiet but impactful, by putting a lot of pressure on the on the thing, I can I can project the voice more without getting loud. And so that's a, there's physical techniques you can use also to make yourself project without getting louder. Oh, well, that's a good moment to just point out too that there are times when studying with a singing coach is a wonderful parallel to the voice acting because you can learn breath control and you can develop your range and you develop a little more control over the voice as well. So that's another recommendation. Well, I was going to start as a singer, mm -hmm. not as an actor. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which reminds us, we're going to be singing tonight at 10 o'clock at karaoke. Nothing. Any more questions? Oh. Wow, yes, yes, and then you. Just kind of a follow-up to the you were mentioning earlier. What was a memorable physicality that you had to do in high school or did it like to the like kind of to the effect that I didn't know I could actually bring that kind of place out? Oh, for a character? Like could be for a character or just something else in the performance. Actually, um that's a, I can answer that one. Recently, because most people don't think I can do this, and they don't let me do it, I got to play a character who is described as a Statue of Liberty Amazonian goddess. Can you believe it? And I looked at the director and I said, because I was playing cute little voices for the show, and I looked at him like, wait, you remember he was in here, right? So you're talking to. And then he followed that up with a monster. It was so much fun. So it was. Vi I had no idea what was going to come out of me because I didn't know that I could do it. But like Tony was just saying, never say no. Sure, I can be an Amazonian Statue of Liberty goddess. Um, but yeah, so I just did what I did know about my voice, which was relax, open up my diaphragm, hit my pose, and let the voice rip. And I had a blast. And I got to do this wild, deep, resonant, statuesque goddess voice that most people don't know I have on there. It was very fun. No, because I'd have to kill all of you. <laughs> Not yet, but she's coming. <laughs> when I was young, I might actually hurt. Uh, but I didn't know I could do it. It was I was doing Gunbrave, and uh, there's a scene where he has killed his brother, and he has his personality breakdown in an elevator, and screams his oh, Brenda, and he's screaming out loud. And uh, I was giving it all I got. This time I was going to really get the punch because you know we try so hard as actors when we really shouldn't. And um, and uh, and I felt something go, boop, and extreme pain hit. And uh, fortunately that was a usable take because I didn't do it again. And and that was like, oh, God, I can never do that. And I was I swore I'd never do it again. And I was at a convention and somebody asked me to do the scream. And I did the scream and I felt the boop and did the same exactly again. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> Get trained. Yeah. And I know what I'm doing, supposedly. <laughs> no, I mean, he's trained. But, but like, take care of your, of your voice and know your instrument and respect your limits, <laughs> despite what we're our model and our example. So uh, we're, we're about out of time. So okay. uh, 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 party words? Aw. Um. <laughs> This is an extraordinary industry and career, spectacularly um, special people in it. 
Um, it's an, an extreme blessing to be, to be able to be in it. If you're interested in pursuing a career as a voice actor, my encouragement to you is to take it seriously and develop yourself as an actor and uh, do everything that you can to create a very firm, solid, strong foundation as a performer, as an actor. And in the meantime, develop the behind the mic skills, but absolutely take yourself seriously as an actor and develop yourself. That would be my encouragement to you. And on top of that, also take a look at why you want to do this. A lot of people think it's because, you know, what you do this is I want to be cool, I want to be famous, I want, I want to be work all from those home things. In my pajamas. Yeah, and none of that is true. I mean, I, I, we're both a little famous. It's interesting, but it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's uh, you, 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 I don't know what cool is, so it doesn't make you cooler. I think if you're a cool person as an actor, you'll be a, whatever that is. It's, You'd be cool whatever you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, so fame doesn't work. Rich, you're not going to get rich doing this. That's for darn sure. Uh, so the, the idea is to really understand why it is you need to do it. And if you need to do it, don't let anyone stop you. You do the work, commit yourself, and know that you may never get there. But do it anyway. Uh, and if you can find something else in your life that makes you happy, go do that. <laughs> so, any parting words? Can you? That's my parting words. So, uh, so thank you, uh, thank you, Julie. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll see you tonight at 10 o'clock. Also, we have a how to audition panel later today at eight. Eight fifteen, and one of these panels around here. Thanks, guys. Well, thanks. We'll see you later. Love your shirt.